in the world are these two teams going to follow that? Lakeville North and Eden Prairie. Well, Lou, I know they're certainly going to try. That's for sure. That's why you play the game. You never know who's going to win. And in this game coming up, Michael Graham, one of the real studs in this tournament. This guy's got magic hands. He's got 25 goals. He's dangerous all the time. Take a look at this kid, number 16, the leader on Eden Prairie. He's going to have to be sharp tonight if they're going to advance. And if they're going to advance, they're going to have to beat the guy in the goal for... Lakeville North, Edquist is unreal handling the puck around the net, plays terrific stopping shots. He's been outstanding all the way through the season. Tough to get anything by him, and he's a key man tonight for Lakeville North, so we're looking forward to seeing a great game here, Jim. Coming up for you on 45 TV, Eagles and Panthers. Back with a minute eight left on this power play. Next goal wins. Sadik to him and a back shot. That got blocked in front. Rebound. Score! And puts it home and it's over. Shot. That got blocked in front. Rebound. Score! And puts it home and it's over. In overtime by a score of five to four. Nick Paling. Before that, it uh, went to overtime. Uh, Spinner took a puck in the neck. Remember that, Tommy? He went down yes. to block a shot. It was a great hockey game, and Nick Paling came up. You know, big-time player makes a big-time play. What a win for Lakeville North that put their program at another level. And uh, how fitting that these two teams are playing here <laughs> again tonight. <laughs> but this time, Lakeville North is number one in the state. Right. And it's a big re uh, flip of last year because Eden Prairie was favored. So I think there's maybe a little bit of revenge factor, if you can even say that. But I know that Eden Prairie really wants to beat Lakeville North. And Lakeville North just learned from Edina that you cannot overlook any opponent in a semifinal. That's for sure. After watching the, what the Duluth East did tonight, I expect that this will be as a uh, well-contested game as the one we just finished, Tom. Well, that's going to be a lot to live up to. Yep. Let's go down to Jim Carroll and meet the starters in tonight's semifinal game. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 71st Annual Minnesota State High School Boys Hockey Tournament. Our second double-A semifinal features the champions of Section 6 with a record of 19-9, the Eden Prairie Eagles. Against the champions of Section 1 with a record of 29-0, the Lakeville North Panthers. Before we meet the starters, let's meet the cheerleaders from Eden Prairie. Amelia Thorson, Jessica Larson, Brooke Bramlow, Sarah Haynes, Lexi Kuttner, and Christina Bryant. Now let's meet the starting lineup for the visitors, the Eden Prairie Eagles. Starting in goal, junior number one, Sean DeRocher. <laughs> On defense, junior number three, Louis Rail. His defensive partner, senior number six, Andy Aguilar. On the forward line, left wing, senior number 20, Mark Sullivan. Number 19, Tyler Sethren. And the center is junior number 16, Michael Graham. And the rest of the Eagles. The assistant coaches are Paul Ranheim and Steve Olinger. Head coach is Lee Smith, the Eden Prairie Eagles. Now let's meet the starting lineup for Lakeville North. Starting in goal, junior number 31, Ryan Edquist. On defense, senior number 17, Angelo Altavilla. His offensive partner is senior number 20, Jack McNeely. On the forward line, left wing, senior number three, Jack Paling. 
the right wing, senior number seven, Nick Paling. And the center is sophomore number four, Ryan Paling. And the rest of the Panthers, their assistant coaches are Jake Inneback and Jake Taylor. Head coach is Trent Eigner. The Lakeville North Panthers. Here at tonight's game, officials on the lines, Neil Missling and Clayton Smith. Your referees are Mike Elam and Josh Lupinick. Lakeville North, Eden Prairie. It's our final semifinal, the winner to get Duluth East. And before we start things out here, here's Tori Holt. I think Lakeville North is hoping that we're all done with the upsets right now. A Lakeville North senior defenseman, Angelo Altavilla, probably could have gone Division I in hockey, but he's going to go baseball. He was an amazing baseball player, hitting four home runs in a single game, 15 RBIs that broke the Minnesota State High School record. Had he not chose to go baseball, he would have gone hockey. And what's amazing about it just shows you how deep this defense is for Lakeville North. Yeah, no doubt about that. He's going to a pretty good uh, baseball program in Nebraska. Let's take a look at today's starting goalies brought to you by Holiday Station Stores. A Minnesota family-owned company. DeRocher and Annette Breeden Prairie is going to get some tests tonight. And as we said, Edquist, a key man tonight because we don't think Eden Prairie might get as many chances. But when they do, he's going to have to make some big saves. But they got great skaters and scorers and Michael Graham and Casey Middlestead. Eagles get a quick look. That's uh, Mark Sullivan in. Well, by the goaltender, Ed Quist. Let's do today's game plan now, Lou. Eden Perry's got to get that puck out quickly and clog the passing lanes. Those long passes across ice that they like to do, Lakeville does. Lakeville's got a four chick uh, a lot, and they really have to screen the goaltender. Get in front of that goaltender, DeRocher, and make sure he can't see pucks. Today's game plan brought to you by Chevrolet. Visit ChevyDealer.com for more information. Now, both of these teams in their games last night, they were absolutely smothering on defense, weren't they? Oh, were they ever. What? They they were like Duluth was in that last game, playing mm -hmm. textbook game. Quickly in, Safgren. As he went diving to the net, now Alta Villa through center. Leaves it for Jack Palin. A couple of goals last night, both on backhands. Safgren again is going to get another shot at it and rips that one wide and McCarum sends it all the way back out to center. You've got to try to hit the net on the two-on-one situation because even if you don't score, you might get right. a, a rebound. He might get a deflection. Lakeville North trying to center, excuse me, Eden Prairie trying to center. Lakeville North and attempted to clear. And the Eagles hold it right back in with Casey Middlestadt. Two goals last night. Future gopher. Boy, when he gets the puck as well, and he's fun to watch those hands he's got and quick feet. Taylor Schneider, Panthers on the attack in on DeRocher, and he'll touch it for the first time. Face off in the EP zone. One thing about this game, Jim, we've got really a lot of skill in both teams. And we have sides. If you take a look at that defense, Lakeville North, they've got five defensemen between six feet and six foot five. That's a big defense. They don't give you much room around the net, and they can play physical. Well, they're going to chase out the centerman here for Lakeville North. Max McGlade in is Reed Smith. He sends it into the corner. McGlade will be the one to it to Smith. Hit from behind, Johannes for Eden Prairie. And then coming away with it was Smith, and that's one around, fanned on the shot. Eagles come to center. Cole Lawrence. Johannes, Jack Sadek, Mr. Hockey finalist. Well, that's what uh, last night, Lakeville North, their defense and Eden Perry's defense were probably the two keys in the game. They completely controlled their zones and they moved the puck out very well. That was a, a missed pass, but overall, they were getting the puck out quickly. They were keeping all the shots from the perimeter, from the outside. They didn't give the opposition any real good scoring chances. Both defenses very impressive last night. Michael Graham in to take the draw against Paling. Graham pulls it back. Graham gets it. Now he's tied up. Ryan Paling. Jack McNeely in. And now Jack Paling. Paling to center. 
Somebody got a piece of that, and the Eagles will go back in their zone. Bolden now back to the Lakeville North line, and they'll backpedal and flip it ahead. McNeely. And that's all the way up. The Eagles assumed that that was going to be icing. Yeah, they, they, right. they were just going to wait and not go after it. No whistle. We continue. Paling up high, Alta Villa. Reverses it from wing to wing, and it's a boat. It's open out in front. Paling with another backhand. Then he went to the forehand. He gets it back, and it goes wide. Oh, what an opportunity there for Lakeville North. That was Jack Paling. I scored on the two. Uh, Backhands, and the funny thing, his post-game comments were those were probably his first two backhanded goals all season long. Well, he had another chance. And <laughs> I have to tell you, Safka made a great defensive play after the initial shot because Paling was going to have another opportunity, but he didn't quite get to it because yeah. of Safka. Here's an icing on Eden Prairie. We're just underway, and we're scoreless. A couple of early ones. And good ones, by the way, not only in <laughs> shots, they were quality chances. And Sean DeRocher in the nets for the Eagles. He's a junior. 2.71 goals against. Target single to Sullivan. Just backhanded that one wide. Another good backhand shot. We're seeing the number of backhand shots. I was shots just going to say, good. that's kind of the shot of choice. Yeah. And a lost start because of that curve on the stick, it's harder to control and lift the puck and all that. And if you could make that shot, you're going to get some quality goals because well, that's a tough shot to stop. You don't know when it's going right. to be released or where it's coming from. And even sometimes because of those curves on the stick, the uh, the shooter doesn't know where it's yeah. going to go because sometimes he has trouble lifting it. That's true. Target Singer off the blocker of Ed Quist, pushes it back behind the net. Now it's Sadek. Going to be a gopher. His sister plays college hockey at Ohio State. As it comes in, out, in, offside. He plays with a lot of uh, poise. He He's not afraid to handle a puck, as you saw right there. He made a nice little move, a give and a go, and the pass was a little off, but uh, the, the fake to the forechecker was very good. You know, when, when you see a defenseman's got the ability to handle the puck, hold the puck, make somebody miss, that's a, a big asset because you've got to get on the zone sometimes. You have to be able to beat people. Eden Prairie organizing their zone. They'll just flip it out with a backhand again. Back for Lakeville North, Jack McNeely. Down the wall is Smith. He carried it out in front, denied. Hold now. Picks it up for Eden Prairie. Now Trumpy, and he will simply dump it in. He needs to head to the bench, and that gives McNeely a chance to start it up here. McNeely is also going to Nebraska, but University of Nebraska Omaha to play hockey. Coach Blaze, Arizona State's getting a Division One team. How about that? Yeah, that's going to be a, a real thorn in some people's side. They're, they're going to have a good time recruiting. Well, yeah, come, come <laughs> not a bad place to play. Play hockey and then play golf. <laughs> you read my mind, Lou. There's Jack Bailey. Swings it around. All the way back to the point. Sadik wins the race there to hold it in. And North player knocked down. Nick up. Bailing. That's going to be a penalty. Stick also was not loose. And that was the player who perpetrated that penalty. It'll be a trip. And Lakeville North. We'll go on the first power play of this hockey game, so things will be tense here for the next two minutes. And we watched the way they move that uh, puck around. Mark Sullivan going off for tripping. The way Lakeville North, they got, I think it was 36% on the power play this year, which is huge. No doubt about that call. That, that was a, a beautiful trip. <laughs> but Lakeville North will really move that puck sharply and watch down by the net. They like to pass the puck all the way across the ice. And someone always comes down low by the net looking for a back door. Yeah, they win the faceoff. Max Johnson centering here this power play. Power play brought to you by Catholic United Financial. Quick reversal up ahead to Seda. Johnson. Jack Paling. Tried to center. Comes right back to him. And you saw the other Paling just looking back there. Nick yeah. Paling come from the point down low. Nick's the one who has it. Flips it to the corner for Jack. To Nick. To Jack. To Ryan. 
to Nick. Shot. Save to Rocher. Then off the pipe on the rebound. Back to Ryan Bailing. He finds Nick. Ryan. Down low to Jack. Wing to wing. Sadik. Up high Nick. Now Ryan Paling. Nick Paling. Patience here for Lakeville North. Over to Sadik. Sizes one up. And that goes wide. And then the carom came out. And Paling ripped one. But that's off the glass. And it comes back out to Sadik. Who brings it to the middle. Shot pad saved to Rocher. Jack Paling was there for the rebound. And now he has it behind the net. Way up for Nick. 44 seconds left in the power play for Ryan Paling. Wanted to go back to Jack, and it's tipped out. Prairie, Eden Prairie just able to clear. And he couldn't get all, Eden Prairie couldn't get all the defense off. Now Nick just comes in with the head of steam. Stick handles his way, but didn't get the shot off. And then a nice clear by Hugh Trumpy. That'll go the length of the ice. Two shots on goal in this power player for Lakeville North. Great puck movement, but excellent defensive work by Eden Prairie, especially the defenseman down by the net, closing off those passing in the second power play unit now in as Schneider comes into the slot and backhands one in on DeRocher. He'll glove and the faceoff will be in the Eden Prairie zone with 12 seconds left in that penalty called on the Eagles Mark Sullivan. Eden Prairie very content to let the puck go around the perimeter the outside. A lot of passing by Lakeville North. Good puck movement but they couldn't quite get a lot of shots. They were able to get one in close but outside of that Terrific defense by Eden Curry, especially by the two defensemen down low. And the Eagles get to it and clear it. That will do it for the power play. Eden Curry's penalty kill coming in at 82%. Anytime that's in the 80s, that's good. And especially against this team, Lakeville North has got all that player power. Henry Ennebach. Puck on his stick. Carries it in deep. Schneider had it, lost it. Eagles now control. They look for Safran. Safran gives up to Sullivan. Want to go back to Safran. Set takes the shot. Save Edquist. Rebound comes up high. Shoe a shot. Lots of bodies. Traffic knocks it down. This could be a three on one. In shot. Score! Henry Ennebach. Well, Ennebach's been a dangerous guy for this team for two years. Last year in the tournament. This year as well. A good looking right winger. Good score goals. He had 21 coming in. He got a big one last night. Another one now as we had a, a block shot, a three on one, and really there's not much you can do. Whenever you have an outnumber situation, you should get a shot on that. You see the block there, the defenseman going down. Now you're going to get a shot. You want to get a good shot. Ennebeck held it, went to the net. And there's not much the goalie can do, not much the defenseman no. can do. He, the defenseman took away the pass area. The goalie's got to play the shooter. The shooter makes a great shot up high. Goal for Lakeville North. They lead 1-0. Yeah, you feel bad for Nicky Lieberman there, the defenseman. He's three on one. But he made the right decision. He just had yeah. just a great shot. Lakeville North, the second of the tournament, number 21. And a box 23rd of the season. Johnson the assist. Basically, he was the one that blocked it. Anabach's been a good player for Lakeville North ever since he went there last year. Panthers get it back. Target singer no go now for the Eagles. Lost it off a of poke check. Aguilar across the line. Shot off a leg. Argus Singer going down. Ryan Paley. Sadik clears to the line. And now rink wide. Jack Paley. He's the single season points record holder, career goal record holder, and for career points as well. Lakeville North. Ian Prairie in with a shot that caroms off the inboards. And then off of that, they'll clear it all the way down. And Eden Prairie, still, you know, they get a lot of time. They still look like they're confident with the puck. They're making good plays. Target Singer spins. Oh, and he had a man right out in front. That was off the stick of Sullivan. He gets it back. Now he'll center. Graham down the middle. Gets back to it. And on his back is McNeely. But still Graham able to maintain and then reverse it to the corner. Safran throws his body in up against Alta Villa. And now it sneaks back to center. And back by Shu. Knocked down though. Reed Smith. His triple team didn't have much he could do with it. Brady Shu brings it across. Leaves it for Sullivan. And here comes a whistle. Arm is up. High and stick. a high stick. So Puck played with a high stick. So no penalty. We'll step aside in a one nothing game.
tournament fans, log on now to prep45.com to order this or any of your favorite games. You can make the memories of your favorite athlete last a lifetime with your own DVD copy of the Minnesota State High School Tournaments presented by 45 TV and Grand Stadium. The biggest buyer is going to be Mike Randolph. He's going to buy one of them. Those are going to be early Christmas yeah, gifts. That's for sure. For all of his guys. I like, Jim, the way Eden Perry's taking the body. They have to take the body if they're going to win this game. And they are going to the puck area and they're laying a check on him. They've got to do that to slow Lake, uh, Lakeville North down. Michael Graham wins the draw. Quick shot by Suquist. We talk a lot about the uh, paling line, the three paling brothers, but this is a terrific line for Eden Perry. Graham Sullivan and Safgren. You got a couple seniors on the wings yeah. of Graham, and they, they know how to play. Graham, two goals in the game last night. Eden Perry beating Blaine 5 to 3. Cleared by the Panthers. This is icing. Get your local news, weather, and sports every night. On 45 Local News, 45 TV Local News at 9 p.m. It's right here on 45 TV. And for the latest in high school sports, visit prep45.com. Mark Sullivan wanted to take that draw. Yeah. Casey Middlestead comes in. Nope, this is mine. And he wins it. And the shot is on goal. And well, Quist the save. You know, that's two face-offs in the defensive zone of Lakeville North where they lost him and they got good shots on net. Lakeville North has got to be diligent on those face-offs because you got to some good shooters in Eden Perry. You keep giving them opportunities, they'll put it away. Middlestad again, this time paling in. And finds a way to thwart the Eden Prairie plans there. Swung back around. Circling is paling. Coming down, Michael Graham to cause problems. Graham bumped by McNeely. Jack paling. Nice rink wide. And allow Ryan paling to come out to center. Tried to play it to himself around Bolden now. That didn't work. Back to center for Jack. We see those cross ice passes with this paling uh, line all the time. But that one in the defensive zone could be dangerous. They better be careful. Middle stat goes back into his zone. Brett Bolden now. This is what Eden Perry did so well last night. Their defenseman handled the puck so well and brought it up ice. Aguilar, that's why defense, when it comes to recruiting and college and even in the pros, those good defensemen like that, I mean, those are gold. Boy, that's for sure. You, pressure gets relieved, puck gets out, and many times, you know, you get a shot yourself. Yeah. Maybe you a good scoring opportunity. Alta Villa, his pass skips by everybody. It'll be an icing on Lakeville North. We have 6-17. We're in the first period. And the Panthers, it was Anna Bach at 7.45, his 23rd of the season. And that's where we're at right now. Shots are 6-4 Panthers, so that's been pretty even. Yeah, th this game, you know, when you look at the possession time and zone time, it is even. Sadik, quick reversal, then the long pass ahead for Schneider. Didn't connect, but he'll still go after it. Shoe for Eden Prairie. Up ahead, Johannes. Shy of the line. Trying to backhand it in was Pizan. Still does end up in the Lakeville North zone as he'll have to backtrack a little bit to center Schneider. Schneider on his first year on the varsity. Finding himself on the second line. And he's had a good year. He's had 15 goals for them. Louis Rail. He's looking for the puck. It was in the air. They find it. Pizan. Middle stat trying to pull it along the dasher, and it comes to Pizan, and he'll bounce it wide at the Lakeville North net. Four checking Sullivan creates a turnover, almost out. It does. Middle stat gets it. Backhand blocked by a sprawling defender, and cleared by Lakeville North. No icing on that. Ed Quist handles the puck well. He'll play it up out to center, then tipped in Argetsinger. And Edquist then handles it here for Lakeville North. The middle stat, right wing rail shot. Edquist the glove, the save, and we'll get a face off. Under five remaining. We got some activities here as we get a face off up and coming. For tickets. I can't make it to the game, Lou. Any chance you can get me one of those posters? We might have to put Dubnik in on that poster. <laughs> I mean, he won another big one tonight. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. You are correct. Off of the faceoff. Back to Sullivan. To Rail. Back in deep Safran. 
Ryan Palin just swoops in, picks it up, tips it up to his brother Nick. And then it's out of play into the Eden Prairie bench. One thing about uh, state high school championships, the coaches have to love it when they got great top lines, top two lines, because when you get commercials, yeah. they get an extra rest, so they can get themselves an extra shift, probably an extra two shifts a period with their top lines. And I don't know. I know. I don't know if any of the sections do this. I know that uh, in 7 AA, Duluth East, their games are televised locally up there, so they get it in their section championship game. So they kind of get acclimated to that before they get to the state tournament. Well, I, the regions here aren't. Uh, on the, they, they might be on the, on the computer, but not on the right. TV. Jack Palin, Lakeville North, centering pass, going to the net, Alta Villa, but then that takes him out of position here as Eden Prairie comes back. Safran in, stick down by Edquist. Left there for McNeely. What comes away from the half wall, and it's grabbed by Graham, and he gets a shot right in on Edquist. A good shot there by Graham. He's got the quick hands, boy. He, he just glides. He's such a great skater. You think that he's just coming at you in uh, normal speed. Sometimes it's warp speed. He just looks so smooth all the time. He gets to those loose pucks, and when he does, he makes things happen. What a good-looking hockey player this kid is. Been a terrific player for Eden Prairie for a while. It's, Two goals yeah. last night. He, three hat tricks, Lou. Yeah, look at he and uh, Middlestead. The two centermen. Great hands, great shooting ability. They both lead the team in goal scoring. Yeah. Which is kind of a lost art for centermen, right? They're usually facilitating. Oh, yeah. yeah. Up high, he's on. Wanted a T1 up. Kicked around. Rohrbach. Behind the net, Sadik. Up to center, but that didn't connect. And then back to center by the Panthers. Backpedaling shoe. Long rink wide diagonal. Lawrence for Eden Prairie tipped up into the netting. Tori Holt, you got something for us downstairs, buddy? <laughs> well, yeah, we talk about Nick and Jack Paling so much, but the sophomore on that line, Ryan Paling, has been such a big addition to that line this year because in big games like this and big emotional situations, he's the one who kind of keeps those two guys cool during those uh, tight games that uh, get hotly contested. You know? All right. He might be the sophomore, but he's the biggest one of the yeah. three, too. Just think if they were triplets, they probably would have yeah. had four Mr. <laughs> hockey candidates because they yeah. <laughs> probably would have to have to put all four brothers or all three brothers on yeah. there. But uh, the two twins and then the younger brother, quite a combination on that line. And of course, all three, St. Cloud State. Well, Jack and Nick are the them. seniors. Yeah, yeah they're, they're going to have, have fun, fun with those guys up there. <laughs> no doubt. Now the question is, do they keep them on the same line? Well, of course, the first two will be there two years before Ryan gets there. You know, it's going to be like the Sedin twins, I guess. Yeah. Huh? At Vancouver, they keep them on the same right. line for years, and they've been extremely <laughs> successful. Lakeville North working that puck in deep. They lead it here 1 0. Final three minutes of the first period. Loved Sadik. Winds one up off the pad of DeRocher. And he's very able to grab it. And Middlestat raises through that center circle. Quick little shot. Edquist knocks it down. Middlestat overskates the rebound. And it'll be Lakeville North for Sadik. High off the glass, up over the glove of DeRocher. Aguilar has to maneuver around a downed stick. Ryan Paling coming back through as he dashes into the zone. Jack Paling at the point holds it in. Louis Rail. But Aguilar now out. And Middlestat will track it down. He's onside. Little shovel around the defender. What a nice play. What a play that was. You could just tell the kind of hands he's got. He just played it to himself and was able to, with his speed, just accelerate, cut to the front of the net. A super opportunity for Eden Prairie. Alta Villa with a dump in for Lakeville North. Cleared by Eden Prairie. Picked right back up by Jack Bailing. Bailing's goal last night off of the neutral yeah. zone faceoff was just beautiful. Well, we've had some beautiful goals scored in this tournament. Big blast, Alta Villa. There's a guy who can hit a baseball 380, 400 feet or more. You can also rock the end boards with a slap shot. Talking about the goals, Middlestead, Graham, Jack Healing. We've seen some outstanding individual efforts.
Freeze in the defenseman, pulling the goaltender, putting up chairs in the goaltender. Jack Bailing lost it at the line, sent the other way, Pizon. One minute left to go, first period. Johnson on net, DeRocher let it be, decided to cover. Well, Face off coming up. We've had a period, Jim, I guess you'd have to, it's pretty even, even though Lakeville North leads 1-0. If anybody had more possession time, it's Eden Prairie. Eden Prairie's been moving the puck really well. They're just not able, because of the defense of Lakeville North, to get some shots in that shooting area around the goaltender. Lakeville North winning the faceoff. Sepper just didn't have room to maneuver. Now maneuvering is Cole Lawrence for Eden Prairie. Gets to it in the corner. Sadik will take him out. And in turn, find the puck. Swept up to Ennebach. And it's Sadik. To the high slot, shot and loved. Edquist ready for that, and he hands it right on up to Taylor Schneider. For Johnson, backhand, forehand, poke check to Rocher. He came out and challenged him. What an effort by Max Johnson. We almost saw another spectacular goal. Dumped in, Sepper. 14 seconds left in the period. McNeely right back in for Lieberman. Over to the opposite corner, okay. Shoe. Lieberman didn't have a whole lot on it. Just two seconds left. Pass to Graham. That's the end of our first period with the number one ranked, number one seeded, and undefeated Lakeville North Panthers leading it. Look at this move by Max Johnson. Gives goals right around the defenseman, but that goaltender. You see DeRocher just poke check oh. that puck away. It was a perfect play because had he not done that, mm -hmm. Johnson was going to pull it to his forehand yeah. going across. It would have been tough to stop because you don't know whether it's going to go down low or upstairs. Let's go down to the Lakeville North bench. Dory. Yeah, Trent Eigner here. Uh, coach, uh, how happy were you with your start? I think we were average at best. I think yeah. both teams were a little bit uh, not great, not great. What's it, what's it like to, to get a team prepared when you have to sit back there and wait for another game to finish that uh, is so highly contested? Well, I mean, you try your best not to focus on anything but your own preparation. So, you know, I just felt like in the first period, both teams were on their heels a little bit, and it was kind of counter-punching back and forth. Hopefully the game will get going. All right, I appreciate your time, Coach. Thank you. All right, there's Trent Eigner. Thank you, Tori. First period in the books here. Winner gets to Luth East. Lakeville North staking claim to the first period. They lead it 1-0. yesterday in a celebratory mood after their quarterfinal victory, an unlikely victory in overtime over St. Thomas Academy. And, as we've mentioned before, a little bit of a Groundhog Day going on. Here's Mike Randolph celebrating once again a victory over the number two seed and defending champion, Edina Hornets. And now joining us here on the set on 45 TV is Duluth East head coach, Mike Randolph. And Mike Mike, I gotta ask you, most of the state of Minnesota considered your, your team a huge underdog against Edina. Did you think you were an underdog or did you guys believe in yourselves? Well, after our fortunate win against St. Thomas, I think the kids, we told our kids that St. Thomas is as good a team as there is in a tournament. They're as skilled as anybody. They had the puck most tonight. Edina will have the puck most tonight. Just play the way we need to play. We got a chance, and I think the kids started to believe that. And in your game plan, Mike, I mean, when you changed, because you did change your forechecking system and all of that, maybe explain a little bit why you did that, why you made such a radical change with your kids. Well, first of all, we weren't winning. <laughs> yeah. And we just had to look at our personnel. We, we believe that we play till Christmas time, look at the personnel, and then try to come up with a scheme that fits the personnel. And then you got to sell it to them. And we sold it to them, started getting some, we got some good ties. Yeah. Really didn't win, but we're in every game, and I think they bought into it. Now, I know That's you've good. got some unfinished business in the championship game tomorrow, but tell me about the emotion of these two wins. What was it like in the locker room, and how are your players dealing with all of this? Because right now, most of the state of Minnesota is rooting for them. I'll tell you what, they've done an incredible job of dealing with it. Last night, of course, was very emotional. And of course, at the hotel, all people are doing is talking about pat them on back, tell them how good they are. And <laughs> I've got to bring them back down to earth and know the same thing now let them enjoy it they're back in their rooms off their feet tomorrow morning we'll wake up park it get back to work we got one more okay coming up here 
Mike will be seeing some of the uh, some of the highlights and uh, we'll go forward. Here's the first breakaway by your Altman. What's going through your mind? I'm saying bury it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying because it's tight at that time and you know. And then he gets another chance and now what do you think? You better bury it. <laughs> and he went the other way. You think he heard you on the way down, though? No, I'm just going, please bury it. You know, the, the building uh, exploded when that happened. How exciting of a moment was that for you in your long hockey career? Where does that rank? Well, that ranks right up there. This team's rank ranks right up there. I mean, they came out of nowhere and have come so far. And they just, they just refuse to quit. Does this team have some of the magic that the 95 team had with David Smigar with the three hat tricks? And well, that, that, was, that was a different group. I, I compare this team, and I was standing at the same hotel as the 91 team. Our leading scorer in 91 had uh, 28 points, Jeremy Jeanette. Our leading scorer coming in the tournament after the regular season at 22, Nick Altman. So we kept telling them, you remind me of the 91 team. We're staying in the same hotel. 91, we're in the finals. We lost. Hopefully this time we'll get to the finals and win. And Mike, you come into this tournament 14, 10, and 4. I mean, you were barely a 500 hockey team. How do you turn it around that quick? Did it start maybe with the Grand Rapids game or the Elk River game in the section finals? I think we just, the, the schedule was so competitive that we, we, we could not take a night off. And we just had to keep with it. And 27, Brian Button, Nick Altman, drive the bus. And they're great leaders. And everybody jumped on the bus and they refused to quit. I had these guys up at 6 a.m. in the morning one morning because I wasn't very happy with them. And I tried to tire them out. I couldn't tire them out. Just give me more. Wow, that's great. Well, uh, Mike Randolph, head coach of Duluth East, congratulations. Good luck in the championship game tomorrow as Thank Duluth you very East much. goes for its fourth state championship. And here, one more look at the excitement of tonight's victory over Edina. Mike Randolph, that was actually last night. This is tonight's excitement. And there's more excitement tonight. to come in this game. Lakeville and Eden Prairie. Won You see the great block shot by Mac Johnson. Max Johnson. He just does all the little things very well. Makes a great dish, and it's a, a great finish upstairs on the goaltender. And that's Annabeck's 23rd goal of the season. How exciting is this? You take a look at the stats here. They're brought to you by Polymet, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. You can learn more at gopolymet.com. Mike, anything jump out at you on yeah, those the Yeah, the face-offs won. Lakeville North, 13-6. Eden Prairie can't lose that many face-offs. They have to struggle to get the puck the way it is against North Lakeville North. They have to win those face-offs. All right, Eden Prairie will try to keep us a tight contest against the number one seed. We'll be back in a moment. Ringside. Thanks, Tom. Well, Eden Prairie head coach Lee Smith was really happy with the way they played in that first 17 minutes. He thought the one mistake really was a good D-to-D -D pass. It is shot. to hit a defenseman. It ends up in a three-on-one, goes into the back of their net. But other than that, he really liked the way that he played. He thought in the second period here they had to do a better job with net front presence in front of Ed Quist, the goaltender for Lakeville North. He figures he gets the shots through. They do do a good job in that and getting the shots through and on goal, but they need someone there to pop in the rebound. Better net front presence, Louis. That's for sure. They, you know, when you look at the game overall, both of these teams are playing the way they want to play, and they both have a lot of skill. But if you make one mistake, it could end up in a net. That's what happened to Lakeville North. A little mistake by Eden Prairie. They get a three and one. It's in the net. They're, they're both dangerous hockey teams. They both got the capacity to score goals. Lakeville North a little more than the uh, Eden, Eden Prairie. Eden Prairie scored, I think it was 98 during the year, and Lakeville North was 160. Was that first period pretty much what you expected as far as pace of play and what the teams are doing on the on the ice? Yeah, I just think that uh, they got to show a little more emotion. It seemed like we had more emotion in the, at the Duluth East and the Edina game. These two teams are a little more placid and uh, almost flat. I, I think if you start body checking and, and getting yourself in the game, play with a little more intensity, you'll, you'll see a little more excitement. 
Eden Prairie wearing the red, and in the white, it's Lakeville North, and Eden Prairie gets a quick little look. Backhand goes wide by Graham. They hold on to it, though. Aguilar, shot, oh. score! Good shot by Aguilar from the point, probably screening Edquist a little bit, but it was nice and low on the corner, and that all came through the forechecking of Eden Prairie in the offensive zone. Keeping the puck in, getting across ice to Aguilar, and what a good wrist shot. That's only his second goal yeah. of the year. How about that? We are tied. That's why you put pucks on the net. Here's a nice little play. From the corner, back out to the point. A little low shot. I don't think that was deflected. It was an attempt by Grant to deflect it, but I don't think he touched it. That looked like a pretty straight yep. shot right in the net. Brand new hockey game. And it comes just 23 seconds into our second period. Trying to answer Max Johnson for Lakeville North. Hold away. In. Shot. Save. DeRocher gets a pad on that. Riley Argetsinger shows he's got a little bit of speed. Yeah, and he's had a couple of attempts at the net today. He will shoot the puck. How about middle stat? Oh, I love the way he skates. <laughs> He's all the way in. Corner to corner. Max Johnson, though, steps in to intercept. And in turn, Lieberman for Eden Prairie got a stick on that one at center. Another chance for Argett Singer, gloved by DeRocher. And he will make sure that it stays in his glove. And we'll get a face-off here in his end. Here's a shot again from the point. You'll see going to the far side, attempt to tip it, but I don't believe that was touched. It looks like it's going straight, and he just went over his stick. That's tough to say. You know who's going to know? It's Graham. If, yeah. he, if he tipped it, he'll say, I got right. the goal. They'll change yeah, it. He'll feel it. But that, that stick would have vibrated on him. Yeah. No, but he'll, he'll, he'll you know, we'll get a, a, goal, cha a goal change had he changed, uh, had he, uh, touched it. But we'll see that later. Clear all the way down. That's not something really to be worried about right now because we've got ourselves a 1-1 game. Johannes crosses the line. Shot. Pushed aside. The blocker of the goaltender, Edquist. Mm, very putting shots on net, Jim. They're not afraid to yep. shoot from all angles. Work it back to Shoe. And now cleared. McNeely for Lakeville North and then swept in by Smith. Stop behind the net. He's on. They did give the goal to Andy Aguilar. They waited. I think they were trying to confirm who got that goal. And it was Aguilar. As you mentioned, Lou, just his second of the season. But the good thing about the defense is they are smart enough to put shots on the net. And they moved the puck real well. We're looking at Graham here who attempted to touch it. He didn't. But the defense of Eden Prairie was really, really, I think, the highlight of the game last night. The way they moved that puck out of the zone. And they're playing well again here tonight. DeRocher had a sneak past Tim. Still flipped. Sadik off his stick. Nice job holding it in for Jack Paling. Wanted to find Ryan heading to the net. Jack holds it in. Up and down the wall. Outer half of the circle. Bumped by Lieberman. Down for the Eagles is Michael Graham. And he'll get started with Shu. Shu. Safran. Back to Shu. Bombs one in. That's off the end boards. Rebound Jack Paling. His little shovel up ahead. Nick Paling. He turned the wrong way and ran right into the Eagle. Andy Aguilar knocked him down to the ice. Eagles can't touch that. They'll whistle it down. One thing that Eden Perry is doing exceptionally well as they're supporting their defensemen. We had a case down there when it looked like Lakeville North could come up with the puck through a strong forecheck. The guy backing up the play was a centerman down deep, picking up the puck, getting it out. And that's what they're going to have to do because Eden Prairie probably watched Lakeville North in that first game and they saw how good Lakeville North was along the boards. They came up with a lot of pucks, created a lot of opportunities. Eden Prairie getting to the puck here. Defensive zone faceoff with Casey Middlestaff. And he's just a sophomore. We talked to him like he's a seasoned veteran the way he plays. Wait. That was him back there, you know, getting the outlet pass down deep from the corner. Back to center. Thrown in by Boldenow. Waiting for it was Lakeville North. Stolen back by Sullivan, who tried to center. Does come up the slot. Picked up Enneback. And he'll take it the other way. He gets upended by Aguilar. The puck 
had left the vicinity. That is going to be a penalty. Could have been interference. Lakefield getting another opportunity in the power play. That's what it is going to be. Big opportunity coming here for Eden Perry to get the lead back again. Tied 1-1, 13-52 to go in the second. Twitter, right? Yep. Here's another tweet, this time Chris Locker. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll tell you, a lot of people around Duluth are celebrating tonight, and rightly so. They should, because an under, underdog like that's played spectacularly, played very well. It's amazing the emotion that people get so riled up, you know, win or loss. But it's great to see, because this whole arena tonight was for Duluth. I, I was unbelievable, the noise in here when Duluth would score. As electric as it gets, power play for Lakeville North, penalty Aguilar. Get it in close. Down is the goaltender, DeRocher, making sure nothing snuck by. And now it'll sneak by the point man, Sadik, and all the way down. This power play is brought to you by Catholic United Financial. Sadik will captain the power play here over to Jack Paling. Swung around, pinching his Ennebach. As he pinched, he lost his stick. Then he stopped the puck. If he didn't have his stick, he stopped it with a glove. You know, I, I, that, I'm, you wonder if that's a technicality, if they should have said, well, he touched with his right. last, they yeah. could call a hand pass. <laughs> exactly, paling in the middle, that's for Jack. He lumberjacks his way right down the slot. He was chopping away. Back up high, Ooh. big blast by Nick. Yeah. Rebound, score! Boy, oh boy, that was Sadik shooting the ball from the blue line after the initial shot. It was shot so hard it came off the backboards all the way around right out to Sadik. Sadik made no mistake on it as he blasts that. By the time the goalie could react, he just got part of it and it was in the net. And Lakeville takes the lead 2-1 to one here with 12.42 to go. Here's a shot from the... Oh boy, that, that, that was a blast by Paley. Mm. And then the return blast by yep. Sadik. So it goes Sadik to Paling, right back to Sadik, right into the net, right off the goaltender. You give shooters a chance to shoot, they can hurt you. You shoot it hard enough, you're going to get some of that trampoline effect, whether it's off the goaltender or pipe yeah, or they, the end boards, and you can get some uh, chances off those caroms. These boards and glass are, are very, very lively behind the net. We've seen a lot of them come off the glass and reflect right in front Story of the net off the goal and in and that is well. You've been to a lot of games here ever since it opened. Has it always yeah. been that way? Yeah. Here's a shot. Another one opportunity for Eden Prairie. That was Michael Graham off the blocker of Ed Twist. Back up high. Bolden now. Shot high. And off the rebound came right to the doorstep. Sullivan trying to stuff it in. And some of the folks there are saying the puck is in. There is no signal. There is no light. We have a whistle. Well, the referee lost sight of it, blew the whistle, and it then it came free and got put in. It was after the whistle. You know, there's some uh, some teams, Jim, around the league, and National League, like Detroit, they play it off the backboards to their oh, guys. Yeah. They, they, they look at Here's the puck in front. The goalie's freezing it, and there's no way that they're going to count that because uh, that comes free way after the whistle. Safkin goes right into the net. Goalie's got it under his hand. Whistle had gone, so no question about that. But that's why you got you got to be alert around the net. When that puck is coming, and it's those boards of the glass, it can bounce anywhere. That Sadek goal for the Panthers is seven. Nick Paling getting the assist. Makes it 2-1. Ian Prairie actually has the shots advantage here. 13-10 loop. Yeah, they, they, they've played an excellent game. They're just behind on the scoreboard. The last one because of the power play. Middle stat here for Eden Prairie. Puck ends up. They're looking around. It's in the bench. And we need a little more intensity in the play. I, we came off a game with a lot of intensity. Duluth East mm -hmm. and Edina. The building was rocking. There was a, an emotion in the building. And we, I think the way you're going to get into this game, you've got to get into the game by getting some checks, getting the people into the yep. game, and getting their their intensity as well. You could feel it down on the ice when that happens. Middle stab the draw, and he wins it against Nick Paling. Up ahead, Lieberman. 
Across the line, Sullivan. That shot was partially blocked, and then Middlestack was pushing the goalie, and then Middlestack got drilled by McNeely. Puck came out in front. Now half boards. Target Singer to the middle and tapped ahead Altavilla. Good save there by Drush and that spin around. Jack Paling back to Altavilla. He will ride with the boards along with Sullivan. Puck still behind the net. Up to the slot shot. Oh, that just went wide. Jack Paling tried to pot one there. And he had point blank written all over that one. Middle stat. One on two. What can he do with that? Lawrence or excuse me, Altavilla makes sure he does nothing. And now a penalty coming up. Arm is raised. Let's see what's going to happen here. Well, he played him a little too long after the play. He's going to get a holding penalty because it looked like the body was in good position, but as Middlestead tried to go through, he was still holding on to him. Lake Dill is going to go in the box, and that on that call, you can see Altavilla is playing him perfect here, but then he grabs him right there, and he's holding him after the puck's gone, so yeah. no doubt about it. Watch this hit right here. Oh. The official, oh, you don't know, <laughs> he was protecting himself. You think he was going to go up with the right. arm and call Middlestead for a penalty, but he was just protecting his head trying to, in case that stick came up in front. So Altavilla goal is going for holding. And have to kill off a penalty here. They lead it 2-1. to one. Eden Prairie the puck. Big blast. It's Mark Sullivan teeing it up in the right point, top of the circle. This power play brought to you by Catholic United Financial. Good job by the defense down there, making certain nobody was in front of Ed Quist. He could see the shot. If he could see the shot, he's usually going to be able to handle it. First mm -hmm. power play tonight for Eden Prairie. Lou, they're 0 for 3 in the tournament. Yeah, and they've got a good power play as well. But pretty tough to get goals in this tournament. Graham gets the tap pass. Rocks one on the one-timer. Back to Shu. Over to Sullivan. He tees one up. Knocked down. Reaching over his Edquist. And Boy. they're piling on Edquist. And in a bag. The wrestling tournament's here yeah. last week, guys. In a bag. And say to go there. <laughs> one of those calf ropings. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've had the world's toughest rodeo here at XL Energy Center as well. And we're going to get some escorts to the penalty box. Here's one time for each club. Time it appears. Going in after the puck is, is held by the goalie, the whistle's gone. So he, I'm sure he'll be going. And right after him, I think you're going to see probably Ennebeck go. It'll be one of the. They're going to think either him and Sadik. I think they'll probably take Ennebeck. So it'll stay five on four, Eden Prairie. Their power play is a minute 33 remaining. A little bit of action and activity down there. Everybody trying to protect the goaltender, mm -hmm. which you got to do. The goaltender yeah. had that frozen, the whistle had gone, so he can't be going in there and trying to jab it loose after that. Nick failing against Sullivan. Nick wins the draw, pulls it back. Sadik clears it all the way down. By the way, the clear. That, that faceoff came out of the zone because the defenseman came down low. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, with both, both players going, the faceoff should have stayed down in the offensive zone. Number the defensive zone of uh, Lakeville, but the uh, offensive zone of the Michael Graham, middle stat. Good and hold on. Once again, the Panthers will clear. DeRocher comes out. And they'll set it up here for Brady Shue. And it'll be Shue for Graham. Back to Shue. Behind his teammate Sullivan. To the half wall. Bump McNeely still in deep. There is Sullivan for Eden Prairie. Middle stat is in there. As is Shue again. Sullivan past middle staff. Will to trap that puck, get it back. Up high, Graham for Shue. Couple of strides towards the circle in the middle. Sullivan shot. Edquist save. Pushes that to the sideboards. Sullivan gets it back for Shue. Sullivan, he thought about a one-timer, but it was off, so he had to kick it back to his blade. He reverses to the right wing. Middle stat, loops around, looking for a wrister, shot save, golden opportunity. Nice rebound right under the stick of Sullivan. Sullivan, but Edquist was ready again. Good-looking goal to Edquist. Two good saves. You're going to have... Well, we got two, two guys, guys going. going in front yeah. of the net. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Officials are just going to say, ah, oh, you guys are going to do that. We're going to let you cool down in the box here for a little bit. Five shots on goal on this power play here for Eden Prairie. So they're getting chances. Yeah, and Sullivan and McNeely battling in front. 
McNeely trying to get him out of there and Sullivan trying to screen. Look at the two of the and they've this has been going on for a while, not just what we're looking at camera right now. They just didn't stop giving each other a shot yeah. and it continues. So we'll see another five on uh, another double penalty It'll still be five and four. Yeah. And the faceoff will stay down in Lakeville North Zone. Four seconds left to go in the Ian Prairie power play. And we said they have five shots on goal on this man advantage. A trio of Lakeville North players in that box. Two for Eden Prairie. And back out on the ice is Alta Villa, so that penalty is done. We're back to five on five. Nice penalty kill for Lakeville North. That's good. Goaltender's got to be your best penalty killer, and he was in that instance. Zephyr got it going the other way. Now he finds Max Johnson. Johnson taken out by Aguilar. Over to Pizan. He takes a bump from behind. Warbach. And then flipped by Lakeville North. Race for the puck hole. Lawrence swept back on the bank pass here in the Lakeville North zone. Panthers off the skate of Rohrbach. Back to the line. Dumped in Lawrence. The Zephyr going back. Past the midway point of the hockey game. 2-1 Lakeville North. Zephyr. Trying to change directions. He goes down. He's heading to the bench. That boy's six foot five. He's a big man that's up for back in defense for Lakeville North. Yeah, when he goes down, he covers a lot of the ice. Speaking of covering the ice, Lieberman comes in, scores! Oh, what a shot! He goes top shelf below the circle. We're tied at two. Well, you said the exact thing is the reason why they scored below the circle. Lieberman made the rush coming down the ice. Both defensemen now have scored for uh, Eden Prairie tonight, but Lieberman comes down. They gave him the blue line, something Lakeville North had not been doing in the previous game or up to this game. But look how deep the defenseman go. He's down way past wow. the dot. Made an excellent shot on the far side and ties this game up. Good effort by Lieberman. All the way down, right by the dot, past the dot. I mean, that, that was some kind of shot, picking that up a corner from there. Well, right that, up and over the goalie. That shows just how skilled they are when the defensemen on both teams can do what they can do. Well, this is the seventh goal of the year for Nicky Lieberman. And this kid, like the other defensemen, his partners, have played very well in this tournament this year. And in that puck with really a lot of great confidence and movement. The resilient Eden Burr Eagles coming right back at it, tying it up. Arm is up. Another penalty coming up. Seth made this period a little choppy. It's yes, going to be a hook. <laughs> well, that was a nice indication of the hook coming yeah. up. And we're going to have another power play coming up. It's game tied 2-2 two to two when we return. All the laughs are on 45 TV. The rules of comedy were made to be broken. Learn the rules of engagement five nights a week. Rules of engagement is on five nights a week at 8 and 8.30 on 45 TV. And Trent Eigner is questioning the rules here tonight because the referee is explaining the hooking call to him. And you could see the referee behind the net after the hook right here when he's pulling, pulling them down. The way the calls aren't off, you get that sick parallel, and that's what he did. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. That's up and under. That's a penalty. And watch the referee behind the net. He made no hesitation in calling the penalty. He put a little extra effort yes, into that yeah. hooking signal, too. We should play it again. I, I really enjoyed that. It was cool. Like cool. It was yeah. Yeah. Today's power play is brought to you by Catholic United Financial. And the officials are excited to be here at the state tournament as well. It's an honor for them to work. Yeah, it is. And they, they do a great job overall. Middle stats. It's a power play for Eden Prairie. And they take their first lead of the game. Eden Prairie had the puck in the other power play, Jim, and moved it around quite well. They had a lot of opportunity. Five shots. They just couldn't put it in the net. This time... It seems that Lakeville North has been getting more pucks out of the zone and it's going along the boards and coming up with a puck and making Eden Perry go to 200 feet again. Minute 10 left in the Jack Paling hooking penalty. 
Eden Prairie stick to stick. Offside. Sullivan rink wide middle step, but it's offside. Timing was off on that one. We'll bring the face off outside of the blue line. That's right. The pass just behind Safgren, who was breaking down the middle. By the time he lifted a skate, tried to get it, it went to the far side, and he was already over the blue line. So we're getting a lineup change for both penalty killers and power play specialists. Look at the shots on goal right now. 20 to 10 for Eden Prairie. Some of that has been a product of having uh, the power play. Well, you know. Well, it's just, this is just their second power play for Eden yeah. Prairie. Lakeville North, one of two. And, and Eden Prairie has definitely had far more puck possession than Lakeville mm. North in this game. Tells you if you have possession, you get more shots. Yeah. Owen Sullivan. Brett Moldenau. Sullivan. Moldenau. In the corner, Lieberman. Reversal Aguilar, wrist shot, knocked down, Edquist able to steer it back behind the net. And he gets back in position as Eden Prairie sets back up with Lieberman. Reversal over to Bolden now, blocked. Where's that puck? Between a couple of players, now it's behind the net. Target Singer, a couple of players going down. Aguilar comes in, Sullivan is there. Tap back up to Aguilar, up high, Lieberman a blast. And board Karam swept down by Nick Palin. Well, there was an opportunity there. I don't think Sullivan saw it, but he came out from the corner. He had an opportunity to turn and shoot on net. Elected to give it back to the point, but he had some and opening there. That's it for the power play. Argett Singer in, he zips in, wanted a center. Sullivan was tied up, hit somebody's skate. Sadik. Deciding to reverse the puck the other way. Then he took uh, Sadik, gave uh, Mark Sullivan a little love tap there. Showing his appreciation for the forecheck. <laughs> Sullivan from Sadik, up ahead to center. Panthers find Ennebach. They then find Johnson. He uh, has the puck sneak by him. Eagles in their own end. Getting close to five minutes left in the second period. And Sepper goes back, and the puck played with a high stick, and our faceoff will be in the Lakeville North zone. But that'll happen when we come back. We're all tied at 2, 501, second period. What a night of hockey here at the XL Energy Center. It's fan cam time, brought to you by 45 TV. And we certainly have a lot of enthusiastic fans here. Those high school fans are terrific. I love the signs. The signs are usually clever. Yes, they are. Lakeville North fans. Hey, their basketball team, defending state champs, they're heading back. They beat uh, Rochester John Marshall today for a section championship. <laughs> These guys are going crazy. You know what's going to happen, back though? People are going to tape this, and it's going to get on their uh, cell phone to be able to send it all around. <laughs> They're saying it's going to be viral. I don't know if those are flashlights going off in the crowd or what. That's good, that's good. A lot of lights, though. Easy. Okay, we're going to get a stop at your another face-off in the Panthers' zone. Ladies Big night tonight of hockey here at the XL Energy Center. Look at that. 609. That says the record. For the I didn't know they could fit that many in this I, building. I, I was just going to tell you. Thousand. Where are they? I, I was just going to tell you. I hope the fire marshal's not looking. He's <laughs> <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> They used to go, they used to go the nuts with us at the Met Center the when we crowd. got over 16-6 in there. <laughs> and you were the one yeah. who had to make it. Yeah. <laughs> they were the one they were, you were looking for, right? They came after you. And that was in the regionals. When we had the regionals, we plenty oh, times wow. we had them in the aisles. Middle stat in. Knocked down. Back is Johnson. Oh, what a move. Schneider in. Shot blocked. Nice save by DeRocher. Good save by DeRocher and a good recover by Mark Sullivan to cut that angle off. Tipped, but not out. Sepper sends it in. Pirouette Schneider cleared off of the backside of Graham. And Graham finds his way into the Lakeville North zone. He's all alone, needs some help. He thought he might be able to get the middle stat. And Lakeville North says, uh-uh, with Ennebach. Sepper. Over to Schneider. One of the benches and dumped in by Lakeville North. I hope this doesn't happen, Jim, but we could be here late. These guys are really checking on both sides. They're supporting one another. They're not giving a lot of freedom. And Eden Prairie's using the body, I think, more than Lakeville. 
up to this point. I was really planning on sleeping in tomorrow. I don't know if you are getting rested up for championship yeah. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Palin bumped across the line, stays on his skates. Saffron gets to it first. Back behind the net. Lieberman is there as is shoe for Eden Prairie, but it's not out. McNeely to the line. Nick Paling. Reverse to the left side. Not much on that shot. It still hits that end wall. And it'll be Nick Paling for the slot. Defender goes down. He frees up some space. Hits traffic out in front. And Eden Prairie does a nice job getting that puck up and out. Sullivan able to grab it, and then he'll float it in, and Edquist will catch, drop. He is so good at advancing that puck. Boy, oh boy. He's got to spend a lot of time practicing yeah. because he is accurate with his passes. And there are different techniques I've seen. You know, the glove on the top, on the knob, or, or down. And... and he has perfected that art. Brewery in with Lawrence for the net. Knocked down. Back behind the net. Johannes for the Eagles. He got as far up the wall as he felt comfortable. And then he'll just swing it back in. He's on. Johannes. Bumped by Ryan Paley. We've got 220 left in the second period. Tied at two. Johannes. Shot. He was outside the circle, and Edquist was ready for it. We'll get a face-off. Today's closed captioning is brought to you by Touchstone Energy. Together, we save. Pizon and Lawrence both going to see if there's a rebound run into each other. But that's the way you're going to have to score a goal here tonight, I think. You're going to have to get a rebound. It, I believe it's going to be a dirty goal or a screen goal because these goaltenders are playing exceptionally well, and they're not getting good opportunities in the shooting near either team. So they're going to have to find ways to get that puck in the net, and it's probably going to be dirty. And Seffer's the one who comes away with it here for the Panthers. And a Bach. Reversal again. They're going corner to corner because Ian Burry isn't giving them a whole lot of options coming out of the zone. That's right, Jim. And they're taking the body, and they're doing a great job of checking. And when that happens, usually it's only an icing. Oh, they waved it off. Stop behind the net by DeRocher. Swung back out to center. And now Bolden out. Sullivan centers into the skates of middle stat. Johnson for Lakeville North. Trailing him, Michael Graham. He'll say, I'll take care of this. Bolden out. And right back to middle stat. Kicks it to his blade, takes the shot. It's in the glove of Edquist. That shot came out of there quickly, but the goaltender Edquist ready to go, and he'll force the face off. And maybe because we're late in the period, but you saw the lineup shift there. You saw Graham out there with Middlestead. They're both centermen. They usually, you know, one comes on after the other. That time they were out there together, and maybe it's Coach Lee Smith looking for something to generate a couple of scoring opportunities, good ones that neither team has seemed to have lately. Coach Smith picked up his 400th career win earlier this year. Now at 412. Aesop ends up in on Edquist. Backhands and Lakeville North able to get it out to center. Rohrbach almost intercepted. Mm -hmm. Singer had ideas on maybe a 1-0 rush on the goalie. Instead, Lakeville North throws it back here in the Edenbury zone with Shue back to get it. Mm -hmm. Shue has had a great tournament this far. He has. Oh, oh there's, he just got level too. Did he take a heavy check? Buck got swung back around for Lakeville North. That was Warbach. Into the north zone, and they have numbers, so they're able to get organized. McNeely, long rink wide up the center for Jack Paling. He just lets it go. And it gets reversed here to Brother Nick. Reversal to the far side, sizing up the shot. It's right in on DeRocher. He makes the save. They want to go back to the point, and they will do just that. Sadik gets another shot, speared by DeRocher. That was a great save, but Argent Singer has got a stick on that, so that thing was deflected going towards DeRocher. He made two great saves, excellent shots from the point, man. But neither of them could get in. Here's a shot, and a watch Argent Singer stick right. He's going to get it right here, right on the puck. Just deflects it. The puck might have been going wide, yeah, but still a goalie. Yeah, play it That's safe. That's right. Rocher doing a nice job in the nets there, as is Edquist. 
He's only seen 13 shots. Lakeville North held to 13 shots. Cleared by Aiden Prairie. They did a nice job. That's going to do it for the period. And that's something that you would be surprised about. When you see two periods, Lakeville only getting 13 shots on that. They gave him two in the last five seconds. They averaged 43.2. That is something. That tells you the kind of job Aiden Prairie is doing tonight because they have really played a solid game. All right, Tori holds downstairs, and he's with that new member of the 400 win club. Tori. Yeah, Coach, uh, you guys have played uh, fabulous through two periods of play. Well, our defensemen are, again, keeping the gaps tight. Our four checkers are working hard. We're just playing smart hockey. We're keep trying to keep the game really simple. I'm proud of our kids. A lot of effort. You've done a nice job on the paling line, too. Is that a big focus coming into this game? Well, I think it's the number one thing everyone concentrates when you play them. They're, they're tough. We just got to keep sticking with them and give them no space. How do you get this thing done here in the third period and move on to the title game? I don't know. You just keep throwing pucks at that kid and see what happens. But I, I like the way we're playing. We're playing really confident. We're a strong team. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, guys. Boy, I tell you what, what we've seen today, Lou, it really speaks volumes for the depth of the high school hockey class double-A or single-A. Oh, we've had uh, excellent games, excellent players. It's fun to see every year. We come here, look for surprises, and every year we get surprises. And that's what makes this tournament so terrific. You never know who's going to win. It doesn't matter who's favored. All right, today's stats brought to you by Polymet, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals and make this broadcast possible. Learn more at GoPolymet.com. There they are, Luke. And the scoring chances are even. Shots are different. It's always not where you got the shots from. It's are they right. quality shots. You have some chances. Face-offs, Lakeville North is continuing to do a good job in that area. And that's one area where Eden Perry could get better. Third period in a 2-2 game. Lakeville North, all to Villa. Bump that still finds the Eden Prairie zone. And then zipped in by Jack Paling. The puck comes right back out in front. Paling try to get a stick on it. He had visions of sending that one towards the net. Now sent the other way by Eden Prairie. And all to Villa. We'll get going up ahead. Jack Paling sneaks past him. Back deep in the Eden Prairie zone. That's all the way around for Sullivan. Safgren, Sullivan, in on Edquist. And that'll get us back going the other way here with Lakeville North. Well, they want to keep that uh, Art Singer, or, uh, Sullivan and Safgren against Paling's line. You know, you got two senior wingers there, and they want the experienced guys against Paling, and they are doing a good job thus far. Ooh, that puck came unexpectedly out in front of the Lakeville North net, but they were ready for it. Max Johnson. Good looking player. Yeah, he puts on the brakes, gets bumped by Shue, grabbed by Schneider on the second line. Coming in to rescue things for Eden Prairie was Middlestat. McLeod. Middlestat again. And shot, oh, and that was right off of the goaltender, Edquist. Did Edquist ever play that well? He hung close to the pipe. He stayed upright, so it didn't even give Middlestead anything upstairs to shoot at. Schneider for Lakeville North, short of the line. Spin around and backhanded in. It'll be Shue. Oh, he takes a big check there from Ennebach. Now Singer, when he gets going, he can motor. He's met there shy of the red line. Bolden now is the one who's going to then dump it into the Lakeville North zone. Steered right back from where that puck came from by Edquist. And then back to center. Glove drop. Bolden now can't dump it in, though. Comes back to the line. Bolden now gets it back. Bolden now has made some good plays in that blue line tonight. And he gets it back again at his line. Brett Bolden now, he's a, he's a senior. Four goals on the season. Backhanded in, Johannes to Pizan, and from that corner, ready for it is Edquist, he'll scoop it up, and Good the faceoff will be in the Lakeville North zone. Good play on that, because Lawrence was coming right towards the net. It almost seemed like it deflected into the goaltender there, but Eden Prairie 
Still with the poise back there in the blue line, which has been the main reason why they're relieving pressure, getting that puck out. Look at the nice move by Middlestead. Through his legs, comes in, pulls it in, but look at how well Edgequist, Edgequist is really yeah. up high. Usually you see a goaltender go down low. Middlestead thought he might go down low and he's going to get up and under. He really had no room. It would have to be an unbelievable shot mm -hmm. to put it in that upper corner. Back out to Lieberman. And be Lakeville North getting organized. Nick Paling. Out to center. Duncan Dufon. Sepper has to reach up for it. And his shot gets blocked by Safter and Breeden Burry. And you know what's good was that the way Sapkin blocked it. He didn't fall and leave his feet. He had one knee down. You block the puck that way. If it hits you in the proper position, sometimes you can get a breakaway. Eden Prairie, as they went to a change, able to dump it in on Edquist, who hands it to Nick Paling. He sails through. How did he get through? And he hit the pipe. Don't give him any room. We saw that oh last my. night. Michael Graham comes back. He'll try to answer for Argus Singer. Oh. But now it's Nick Paling again. He's one on two. Picks up speed, forced to stop there, and he looks and realizes he doesn't have anybody. Now he's got Alta Villa, goes in with a backhand, saved by DeRocher. Ended up with most of his body in the net, and then sent the length by Eden Prairie. Best two chances that they've had tonight. A great individual effort by Paling. And then another good opportunity for Alta Villa. Watch this great pad save here. Look at that, and then right off the pipe. Boy, oh boy, was that good looking. All right. Lakeville North threatening. They fail to score, and that keeps it 2 2. The third period is brought to you by PolyMed Mining, working on a plan to mine copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Learn more at gopolymed.com. Following this game, you can log on to www.mnpostgame.com and view the post-game press conference live along with archived press conferences from earlier in the tournament. If you missed anything, you can always catch up. Dean Prairie getting to the face-off. Lieberman, little flip. All the way back to the Lakeville North Zone, back to center. And then in by Eden Prairie. Edquist there off of his stick to Alta Villa. Play baseball in Nebraska. Here he's concerned about hockey, but uh, I have a feeling that guy's going to hit some round trippers this year for the Eden Prairie baseball team. Oh, what did they say? Uh, hit a game where he had four home runs in one game. Oh, yeah, you mean for Lakeville, right? That, yeah, I mean, Lakeville, that, not Eden Prairie. I'm sorry. That, that's a lot of home runs. <laughs> some people don't get four in a year. Right. Back up high, Alta Villa. Reversal, McNeely. There's a broken stick, so we've got some debris on the ice. Back to Alta Villa. Rifles it in. Shoe had lost his stick. And now the forward gives him the stick. Yeah, Mark no Sullivan one gave it to him. Yeah, no one saw him, right? Good he play donates. Play. Yeah, donates to the cause. And that's kind of the general rule, right? You want your defenseman to have the stick. Here's a crunching yeah. hit in the corner. Penalty coming up. But then he takes a penalty. And yeah. God, it, Snyder looks like he could be hurting a little bit. Well, that when was you, a dangerous hit there. Lou, when you give up your stick and you see the player down, then you feel like you got to do something without your stick. Right. So you got to go use your body. And then you get in a situation where you take a penalty like that. Yeah, but when his back's to you like that. You, no, you can't hit him. You, you can't hit him like that. And you can't push him in the board. And that, the discussion they're is... They're discussing yeah. two or five. Exactly. I think they'll probably go two, but... Just oh, holding. holding. Well, that, that, that's, that, that was a hard holding. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, Trent, uh, I think Trent's more concerned whether it's two or five. Maybe yeah. they call in holding. That way you're not a problem with the two or five. Taylor Schneider is the Still player down. down. We have not seen... A five-minute major called this season in the state tournament. Let's look at it again. See, it's a shove, actually. It looked like he was just coming towards him. Sullivan was coming towards him, and uh, it didn't look like he wanted to body check him because he essentially shoved him. But being away from the boards like that, you lose your balance, and 
That's it. We're going to go down to Tory Holt. Louie, when I talked to Trent Eigner coming out here out of the break, I asked him what he told his team in the locker room. He said, you know what? It was nothing strategic. He goes, we got to figure it out. We need to play one good period of hockey here and move on, and we haven't done that yet. And they've come out and played pretty good here at the start of this third period. Yes, this definitely has been the best part of their game, and they had two real, their best two chances, actually, to score. Great effort by Nick Paley, and then after an effort by him again, it was Dalton Villa who had another outstanding chance. But we're going to get a two-minute penalty here to Sullivan. We're going to get a power play for Lakeville. And remember, they scored on that last one. Yes. And moved it around quite well. This is a crucial time for Eden Prairie. And a time that Lakeville North has got to be seen. This is our moment because there's 12-19 to go and not many opportunities for either team. Nolan Sull Sullivan and the Eagles very lucky that that wasn't a five. Sadik. Jack Kaling, our power play brought to you by Catholic United Financial. Kaling, to Bailing, to Bailing. Oh, he almost wrapped it around. Yeah, what a great right. what a, I mean, that, wasn't they that were exchanging. Yeah. I don't know, that looked like some kind of a show and a vaudeville yeah. act with them doing juggling. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the show games. The, the show game. Show game. Who's got I got it. it. You got it. Where, where is it? Oh, boy. Well, they'll have to start from behind their net again. Ryan Bailing. Up, shot, high. And it's a glass. Sadik is there to hold it in. Centering for Nick Paling down the slot. Forced to go to the backhand. He'll reset. Sadik. Johnson. Jack Paling. A couple of circles in the corner. Reversal over to the right point for Nick. Up high. Oh, yeah. Sadik shot wide open. Yeah. And they score! Johnson and the Panthers lead. Well, somewhat similar to their last goal in the power play. You get the shot, you get the save. The goal is in a different position on the save. Doesn't get a time to recover. And Max Johnson again, good looking hockey player, this kid, puts it away after an excellent power play. Here's the shot that comes from the blue line. Save the goalie doesn't know where it is. He thought yeah. it's in the skates. Comes off to the side. I thought for a moment the uh, defender was going to get over there to block it. You can see right there. Oh, just over his shoulder. Yep. But that was a heck of a <laughs> shot by Johnson. He wasted yep. no time putting it in. And that gives Lakeville the lead that they've been looking for. Well, it's the luck of the bounce because if that puck doesn't get to Johnson as quickly as it did on a straight yep. line, everybody probably responds. They get in position and it's Four probably a save. Right. The goaltender thought that he was in the skates after he saved it. He didn't know where it went. 3-2 Lakeville North. Getting close to 11 minutes left in the third period. Eden Prairie's answered every time. They're going to have to do it again. Max Johnson is a power Sent in by Tyler Safgren. Out in front. Now they can't touch it. Nope. And Sullivan was there, but he's right in front of the net, but he was offside and no whistle it down. I think he tried to pretend like he, you know the, the guy was gonna play and he could play it, but he's almost he's forced offside. Lakeville yeah. North into playing yeah. it. <laughs> but wouldn't matter. No. That was uh that was quite a goal at Lakeville North. Their power play, we can see why they've had 36 or so percent uh, success this yeah. year. They they shoot the puck. They've got so many shooters in that power play. It's great. Eden Prairie back deep. Aguilar popped up out in front in the glade. Intercepted Smith to the line. Shot. DeRocher saves. Releases. And then we'll cover it up again and we'll get a face off. Well, right now, Eden Prairie's got to regroup. They just don't seem like they're playing with the confidence they had before that goal was scored. And they were playing a great game. They were playing a terrific game. But now, they're, this period, Lakeville North definitely has come out and played their best. They've had a couple of chances, but they've had more puck control. And they just feel like they, they got something going and they can, they can do it. Eden Prairie's got to do something to stop that. Momentum that Lakeville North has got going right now. Jack Paling against Middle Stat. Future Husky versus Future Gopher. Jack Paling gets a poke on it. Picked up Argent Singer. And it is cleared. Bounce back to Shoe. And now a clean breakout. Sullivan. 
for the chip in. Three Eagles after it. And they get it. Middle stand centering pass. But the uh, Paling boys got in the way of that. And they'll backhand it a hand a little bit too far for Nick. And then Eden Prairie throws it right back at the Panthers. Sepper, long rink line. Jack Paling at the red line, dumps it in. DeRocher stops it, sends it right back to the near side. It goes up back behind the net for Shue. Shue, Argett Singer. Up the middle stand, out of his reach. Dufon for Argett Singer. Uh, into the bench. May have hit one of the photographers down there. And we will take a break. 3-2 Lakeville North. They're up by one. Trying to return to the title game. Today, oh, go ahead. I was going to say today's game summary brought to you by Tria Orthopedic Center. For the athlete and all of us, there's Tria Lou. That's right, and you look at the game summary, easy to see. The power play has not been good for Eden Prairie. It's been great, two for three for Lakeville North. Both goals by defensemen for Eden Prairie, Lieberman and Aguilar. Johnson with the go-ahead power play, and Edquist playing very good in the Nets with 23 saves. 9.30 on the clock, third period. Chase out Nick for Jack. Takes a draw and pulls it back to his goaltender, Edquist. Alta Villa out in front. Up to the corner, Safgren. And that'll be Alta Villa. All the way through center, Dufon. Oh, they get it back to Paling and then out in front. Tic tac toe, it's a goal. Chaz Dufon. And, and you know, Jim, that play started all the way down in the Lakeville North zone when Jack Bailey took the man out. And he came up late in the play, and he was in perfect position to get that pass. He sees Dufon by the net and gives it to him. Just an excellent play by Paley, 200 feet of the ice. Went way down there, he just took the man out. Now he's going to trail the play coming up the uh, ice. And here's a Nick Paling over to his brother Jack, over to Dufon, and that's it, all she wrote. Fifth goal of the season for Chaz Dufon, who's listed as a fourth liner, center on that fourth line, and he's getting a chance to play with the Palings, and uh, he's a recipient of a pretty nice pass to uh, give them a two-goal lead. Not too shabby. That's the uh, nicest play we've seen for a goal here tonight, oh, yeah. and Lakeville North just extends their lead with 9.06 to go, leading... Four to two. You know, Lakeville North now the two-goal lead. That means Eden Prairie needs to step it up here a little bit. They've answered each time, but they've never been down by two tonight, Lou. But that's right, and they got a long hill to climb to try and get two goals against this hockey team. The way those defensemen are playing, protecting everything around the goal, forcing the shots from the outside. But that shows how important it is to do your job Point defensively, and that's what Jack Keeling did down in the zone Chance zone to start that play off. Chaz Dufon, the goal, is fifth of the season. Jack and Nick Paling each getting the assists. That was a pretty play. As pretty as they come. And now the top-seeded, top-ranked Panthers have some, bleed, uh, some breathing room here. Up by two. 4-2 advantage. Target Singer tried to get going the other way, but it's stolen. Schneider saved to Rocher. Glade the rebound. Back up around, takes a swipe at it. Max Johnson is there. Schneider. Wants the backhand. Being very able to force it back deep. And they'll come here on the near side wing. Argett Singer. For middle stat, back to the middle on a backhand. Molden out. Bumped. Behind the net, Lakeville North. Max Johnson and Elise Sepper. Luke Sepper, 6'5", 195 defenseman showing that he can zip through the neutral zone. The dump in is oh, there. Long pass ahead. Graham all alone. Shot. Oh. Rebound. Shot. Save. <laughs> Great play by Edgequist. is an excellent opportunity for the leading goal scorer, Graham. And he gets two opportunities and stopped on both on a breakaway. Oh, my. Eden Prairie really needed that. After the puck was Graham. He goes down. Tried to get a call. Didn't get it. Shoe has it blocked. 
Now Jack Paley. And he has numbers. He has Dufon going to the net again. And we wonder what's wrong with the centerman, Ryan Paley, because we haven't seen him on no, the ice. They brought Dufon up. And he's mixed in quite nicely, though, hasn't he? Yes, he has. It's his, his chance, and he scores a goal. He's saying, I like playing with these two guys. I have a feeling uh, skating with either of the two tailings, they could even maybe make me look good out there. <laughs> as long as you can keep up, then they'll give you a chance. <laughs> that would be the challenge. Back across the line, Eden Prairie's Johannes to the Lakeville North line. Sepper. Now turn back ahead. This is Lawrence. He got double teamed, separated from the puck. And it's Lakeville North. Sadik to the line, but it came out, and they'll whistle it down. And then a little bit of a shove there. McGlade got Nick got knocked down. And we just recently saw our save of the game, and it's brought to you by Catholic United Financial, life insurance annuities, and retirement products. No doubt about that. Look at Mike Graham going in and getting two shots. Edquist makes them both after a terrific outlet pass from Boldenau to put him on a breakaway. But all of a sudden, it seems like Lakeville North has got another gear. Yes. This is the quickest they've moved. They're supporting each other in their own zone. They're coming up with pucks. They're not giving Eden Prairie much with the exception of that breakaway. Well, now they look like the team that we expected to see here. Up to this point, Eden Prairie wouldn't let them be there. Right, yeah. Eden Prairie's McGlade. In the middle, wide open. Another big save by Ed Quist. He denied Dufon. Or excuse Whoa. me, Sullivan. <laughs> and now, here we go. People getting a little riled up around the net because Sullivan was in there digging for that puck, as was Art Gitzinger, well, but That's what you're going to do when you're he, desperate, you need a right. goal, you're going to try got, and do whatever you can and push the uh, limit, push the envelope a little bit, if you will. Till you hear that whistle, yeah. you're badly, but goaltender Edquist, again, big. Look at this right here. Nolan Sullivan with an out, outstanding opportunity, and it looked like maybe from behind the net, wow. Arcus Singer was going to get one, too. And you can see Edquist is way out of the net. Yeah. Off to his right. He moved around and quick. It might have been that goal stick that saved that because that was coming up from behind the net. He'll drop it here in the Lakeville North Zone. 6-0-2. Eden Prairie at 10 shots advantage, but it's Lakeville North with a two goal advantage, 4 2. Graham, here he comes with a dot. Shot, rebound, there's Edquist ready for it. That was right in by Mark Sullivan. And Edquist right now, he's on top of the game. And you're talking about Lakeville North being so comfortable right now, and certainly a two goal lead can make you comfortable. As you see it here, it's 4 to 2. There's your matchup coming up tomorrow. Noon coverage here on 45 TV. The Class A title game rematch of last year. Should be a terrific one and six straight times for Hermitown yeah. coming here. And East Grand Forks, the defending champions. They look good. Hermantown was challenged by surprising St. Cloud Apollo. I'm sure they, they didn't surprise themselves, but not a lot of people knew about St. Cloud Apollo as a Class A power, but... Uh, Certainly showed themselves pretty well here this season. They'll play in the third place game tomorrow. Well, look at the consecutive appearance in the championship game. Hermantown with six. And you got to go back to 48 for Everett and wow. 62 for International Falls. What do you remember about that 48 game move? <laughs> Guys in the truck told me to say that. Yeah. <laughs> That was St. Paul Auditorium. You did work games at the St. Paul yeah, Auditorium, oh yeah. which is now the Roy Wilkins Auditorium, kind of cut in half. Starting in 64. <laughs> That's a little bit later than 48. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and today I feel like 106. <laughs> Face-off will stay here in the Panthers zone. Mentioned that the Panthers... Or a little more comfortable, the two-goal lead, but that's why they call the two-goal lead the most dangerous lead, because sometimes you get too comfortable. I think whoever calls that, that is nuts. Because <laughs> two-goal lead's always better than a one-goal yeah. lead. So let I, me tell I you. think that same thing. Yeah, you, you tell me if I had a choice between two-goal yeah. lead and one-goal lead, and you know what I'm going to do. That's just one of those cliches that's yeah. kind of head scratch. Yeah. I'm with you, Lou. 
I'll tell you right now, the two-goal lead looks monumental. The way that wow. Chris is playing in their net, and he's only a junior. Just like the game last night, the way they were clamping down defensively against that Hill Murray club ended up with a 4-1 win. But these guys had some real chances. Eden Prairie's had some outstanding yes. chances here tonight, especially in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, they're getting some shots. They're getting yeah. pucks to the net. That's what they got to do. Hopefully get a rebound. As Shu throws it in on Edquist, Edquist makes the save, and there is the St. Paul Auditorium. Yep, it's in 1945 at St. Paul Auditorium. I bet you that place was wild. Yeah, and there it's were a lot of steps to go from the top <laughs> to the bottom, I can tell you that. <laughs> what was that story? You were doing color commentary and, and interviews, so and you interviews. had to run down? One time I went up and down the stairs one day 54 times. They should have put a uh, far, uh, fireman's pole in there for you. I don't think that's why I need a knee operation. <laughs> <laughs> Eden Prairie. They need to play with some desperation now. Big check by Shue. Comes out to center. Argus Singer. Could not advance the puck. Safegren comes back to try and keep it from going into their zone. And then it's in, and they're going to whistle it down. I think that made contact with the benches over there, so it's out of play. Right. We got 4.23 to go here. Lead Lakeville 4-2, even though they're getting outshot 32-19. But right now, to this point, Ed Quist in the power play has done Eden Prairie in unless they're able to get on that scoreboard and get on it quickly and get a couple before the end of this period and while well, holding Lakeville North off the score sheet. Middle stat for the draw, wins it cleanly, spinning around Michael Graham. Graham trying to hunker down there and he's able to backhand it in. Sadik the first one to it. I think the story of this game so far is Lakeville North, and especially Edquist, holding Graham and Middlestead off the score yeah. sheet. Both goals coming from a defenseman. Aguilar, he got across the red line, and then he got a whole lot of Roman Rohrbach, who almost rode him into the Lakeville North bench. Look at Max Johnson, number six in this tournament. This kid has played just fabulous all the way through. Checking guys, blocking shots, scoring goals. There from the right side. You'll see one today from the left side right here. There it is. This kid has quietly got the 19 goals yeah. because you have so much focus on the palings, you forget how good yeah. Johnson, Ennebeck, and Schneider's line's been. I've heard from uh, people much, much smarter than me that he might be the most unsung player in this tournament. Well, he's surely not going to be unsung after this tournament. No. Score! Another one. Wow. Jack Paling and a bit of an insurance policy for the Panthers. Unbelievable how quick they get that shot off. That puck comes to him, it's on the stick, it's in the net. What a shot by Jack Paling. These Palings, they can score goals. They've been doing it all the time, and they've done it here again. You wonder, look at the puck coming right over here, right across. It's on the stick, it's in the net. And I want to know where Ryan Paling is. Yes. I mean, that's, Which that could be a developing that's story a, yeah, for that's tomorrow. Yeah, big loss. In the upper corner, that kid makes no mistakes. That's why he's got so many goals. At 34 coming into this tournament. And boy, oh boy, he just keeps adding to it. You see a very happy, happy Lakeville bench. That, that logo... Jim looks like the old Quebec Nordiques logo. It does, yes. I know it's an N and an L, actually a hockey stick, but that's the way the Nordiques logo yep. was. Very, very similar to yes. this. I like when uh, teams kind of pay homage to some of the old logos of the past that mm -hmm. no longer exist. Yeah, that was a good one. Their uniforms were good. You're looking at Lee Smith, Smith and Steve Olinger getting their players together, telling them what they want to do. I'm sure you're going to see the goalie pulled very, very quickly here. You gotta find some way to get a puck back past this man. That he won't be pulled. No, up to <laughs> he has had an outstanding game. Only a junior, too. Yeah. That is a nice security blanket is you, when you look ahead to seasons, and of course this one isn't over yet, but to know that you have a goalie like that for multiple seasons. Yeah, nice way to start the season yeah. off. Right away, the, the most important position is your strongest position. On that uh, paling goal, 
is 37th of the season. Nick Paling and McNeely. Jack McNeely, the assist for Lakeville North. For McNeely is 23rd assist. Paling the goal now. 17 left. And we have seen some late quick goals in this tournament. Bemidji is he dying in the quarterfinals the other night. So in the I wonder if they can get a couple of quickies and get back into this. That's going to be tough against this Lakeville North team that defends very well. And Duluth East twice against yeah. St. Thomas. Yeah. Graham leads it for a step back to Graham. Wrap around. Ed Quist ready. Graham still after it. That net is loose, or the net is empty as the puck gets loose there and being knocked down. We're getting a penalty, too, interference. Yeah. We've got two guys down and uh, a penalty coming up to the Lakeville North. Here's a play of the game. Max Johnson's power play goal right here, and that was a huge goal. Second power play goal for Lakeville North, but that was at a critical time here in the third period when it just seemed like... Lakeville North didn't have anything going for them. Eden Prairie had played an outstanding game at that point. Lakeville North came out with a little fire early, drew the penalty, scored in a power play, and that's their play of the game. And that is the play of the game brought to you by CCM Made of Hockey. Well, we got Endebeck in the penalty box for holding, six on four. And that'll give Lakeville North a chance to ice it without the fear of repercussions. Getting it out in front, Sullivan denied and cleared. And this is going to be offline, but still, again, no icing. Six on four advantage for Eden Prairie. So this comes at a good time, and they need three. And Ed Quist already just made a good save down there in front of the net. In is Safgren. Blocked, knocked down, and cleared again. Wide. Sullivan to start it here for Eden Prairie. Safgren in the middle for middle stack. Loved by Edquist and he'll hold on. Smart play. You don't want to start playing around trying to ice no. that puck when you got guys bearing down on you. You got the clock in your side. You got a three goal lead. Do not take any chances. Everything right now has got to just be very, very safe and controlled. You look at the middle step going off there. Yeah. No, he's just a little tired. Eden Prairie, three shots on goal here on this power play. Minute 10 left in the power play. Puck tied up. Comes out in front, shoe a shot. Edquist a save, and here's the pile. Boy, oh boy, that's another good save by Edquist. Shoe was in a perfect position, a nice pass out from behind the net. Got rid of the shot quick, but that goaltender, Edquist, is having himself quite a night. Yeah, he has been impressive. You see a lot of shots. Lakeville North gives up basically less than 20 a game, 19.6. but that, uh, 36 here tonight. Yeah. So this has been uh, kind of an anomaly, and that credit to Eden Prairie with the number of shots they've been able to get on the net, and Edquist win challenge. He has uh, risen to the challenge. There this one's going to go all the way. Ooh, just mm. one. That was a footer too wide. 50 seconds left in the power play. 5-2 Lakeville North. Nolan Sullivan winds one up. Off the end boards, the middle stat. That's off a of skate. Back over for Graham. Loose stick. Rohrbach lost the stick. We'll reverse it. Back up high, Mark Sullivan. That hit a skate again. For Shue, into the corner. Sadik's going to take a shot at it. That'll also be wide. They've had a lot of shots. They have. <laughs> Got to practice their accuracy. They've had four. Safgren, minute left to go in the third period. 15 seconds left in his power play for Eden Prairie. He'll continue with the extra attacker. Shot. That's from that low angle. Knocked down by Ed Quist. Puck stays free. Off the back of the skate of Paling. Eden Prairie still going after another Eden Prairie player just got knocked down. It's going to be another penalty just as the first one expired. As Logan Severson, or excuse me, Tyler Safran was down on the ice. And the penalty's on Lakeville North again. Well, they're getting opportunities, but they can't beat the goaltender. And you're going to see the penalty right here. You're going to see a cross-check right in the back there, and I believe that 
Oh, Golf. the slash. Tap. And there's the elbow. Well, you know, you, you had a couple of <laughs> incidents there, and they're calling one, but uh, the elbow was the final thing. You get the retaliation, mm. you usually get called. With 40.6 on the clock, Middlestat winning the faceoff. Knocked down by Shoe. Back to Middlestat. This power play brought to you by Catholic United Financial. Max Johnson for Lakeville North. Intercepted, picked up Shoe. Able to keep it in. Middlestat kicks it around, centers it. Safgren off of him, all the way down. That is in the empty net. And that will seal the deal if it hadn't been sealed already at 6-2. Well, Eden Ferry came out to play the kind of game they wanted to play. Unfortunately for them, they just couldn't beat Edquist. And that final one right here, Ennebeck's going to get another, another goal, the second one of the game, third one of the tournament. As Eden Ferry was putting on pressure, had a lot of shots, a lot of quality shots but not ones that could beat Edquist because he was on the top of his game tonight. Great effort thus far. You know, Eden Prairie gave an outstanding effort. They were shooting Lakeville North 37 to 20. But on their power play, they got no goals. And on Lakeville North power play, two for three. And that's how you go undefeated. There are going to be games you're going to be outshot. You have to find ways to win in different scenarios. So true. You can't win all the time when you just don't play people. Right. Eden Prairie with Trumpy. Now Flanley coming. Lakeville North. And then a little Check after the whistle, the game, after right. horn activity. And the referee's aware of what happened in the sections, I'm sure, and the separation here. Cooler heads to prevail in Lakeville North. They want to celebrate a win and a trip back to the championship game, Lou, and they're going to do just that. Yes, they are. They had a great night out here tonight. They, uh, they had the battle. They really had to fight to win this game because for the majority of the time, they did get on play. You see the official taking the trophy off the ice. He's getting ejected, but the game's over. Seeing the teams congratulate each other. And Eden Ferry's got to be congratulated for playing a good oh, yeah. game. They just they run up to a goaltender who was very, very good. Good enough to beat you. And Lakeville North perseveres through tough times and finds a way to win. Player of the game brought to you by CCM Made of Hockey. Well, you were saying earlier that somebody told you he might be the most unsung player in the tournament. I don't think he's going to be unsung much no. longer because... Ooh. Game in and game out, this guy's been a factor for Lakeville North, and Lakeville North is going on to the championship game against Duluth East tomorrow night because of guys like Max Johnson, who has played outstanding for them in this tournament. How about that for a storyline? The favorite all season long, undefeated. That Trying to win their first <laughs> title against the team that nobody thought would be there. The Cinderella story out of nowhere. Well, really not out of nowhere. Duluth East, you can't say, you know, they're one of the top programs but didn't have their typical season. You still have to call them Cinderella, though, because of their record, don't you, Lou? Yeah, and look what they've done, though. They beat top teams right down yes. the line. So Lakeville North has got to be very aware of what Duluth East is capable of doing to them. They have come a long way, and they're going to make for an exciting game tomorrow night. And Torrey has corralled one of those victorious Panthers. Torrey. Yep. Jack said a goal and an assist tonight. Jack, what did Coach say between uh, period two and period three when you came out? You guys came out of House of Fire. Honestly, we were kind of flat there that second period. Uh, we just needed to come play North Hockey that third period, and we did. Well, you got a bomb of a shot. I'll tell you what. Uh, about 18 months ago, you were off everybody's radar. Now you're headed to the Gophers. Tomorrow you're going to the state championship game. What's been the biggest difference in your game? I think my confidence level has really gone up these past years. Uh, and I think I've gotten bigger and stronger. I think that's when I, that's what it's gonna keep to uh, get me better. You know what? How much does this mean to you to have a shot at another state championship tomorrow night? <laughs> it means the world to us. Uh, that's been our goal at the beginning of the season. We're glad to have it. Jack, we're glad to have you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Jack said a goal and an assist tonight. Four goal third period. Lakeville North takes command in the final period for a 6-2 lead. And Lou will 
be here again tomorrow night. We're excited about that matchup. Looking forward to it. We should see a great matchup. We're going to see if Lakeville North can beat the trap of the new right. East and see if they get any good chances. Should be a barn burner. Look forward. championship game they move on to the championship game again this year with a victory over Eden Prairie by the score of six to two uh, Mike this uh, ultimately ended up pretty much the way we thought it would be but Eden Prairie gave them a good game Eden Prairie we had a very good game plan going in they worked very hard for two periods but the talent of the Lakeville really came became evident in the third period the palings may not put up all the points but they really, the pressure they put on Eden Prairie all night long finally took its toll in the third period, Tom. And you can't say enough about the goaltending for Lakeville North, uh, the defense, uh, because they were outshot by Eden Prairie, but only gave up a couple goals. You know, Ryan and Edquist played very well, and I think we probably saw the shots on goal, and we would have thought that Lakeville North would outshoot Eden Prairie, but Eden Prairie generated some offense. But like Mike said, their top-end guys for Lakeville North came through tonight. They, they stepped up their game, and they made some great goals there in the third period. Let's take a look at some highlights from that third period as we get into this. Uh, Mike, take us through this. Well, this is Max Johnson. This is a big goal here in the third period. This is my guy. I love this player. He plays so hard and so well. He does so many of the little things well. He's just waiting for that puck. He, right where the coach says, this is where you stand. Look for the rebound. He buries it. And how big were his eyes when he saw oh, that completely oh, yeah. empty net? Then uh, they add another, Dave, and this was kind of a killer. Yeah, this was just a uh, great play by the Paling brothers. Fourth line players, uh, Chaz Dufon puts it in the wide open net. Benefit of a great play by the Paling brothers. You know, and here comes the big opportunity for Eden Prairie to get back in it. What a great save by Inquist there. I mean, that that was that turned the game right there. He stopped not one but two shots yeah. on that open break, yeah. and that was amazing. And then look at that. Well, that, that's those high-end guys for Lakefield North, and you're right, the, the Lakefield North, uh, Ryan Edquist played great tonight. Your best player, if he can be your goaltender, you're going to be win a lot of games. And there's uh, the head coach of Lakefield North, and you can see, uh, very happy, but they've got business to take care of tomorrow night. Today's, or tonight's stats are brought to you by Polymet, working on a plan to make the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Learn more at gopolymet.com. And our post-game report will continue after this. And these are your matchups for tomorrow night. You can see how we've built up to this championship Saturday. Duluth East, a team that just, a, what, what, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, was barely 500. They're now in the state championship game against the number one seed, Lakeville North. And, uh, Mike, as you look at Lakeville North, they're uh, undefeated, now 29-0. and 0. Very few teams have ever accomplished that. We haven't seen it in Class A since 97 and in Class AA since 93. Uh, is that going to be weighing on their minds at all, or no. do you think they're just going to take care no. of business? I think they're just going to take care of business. They're a very, very good team. They're the class of the field this year, in my opinion. They have everything they need to win. They have big, strong defensemen that cover a lot of area. They have a first-class goaltender. And what do you say about their... They have two forward lines that would be first lines on anybody else's team. So they have the depth and they have the quality to win this thing without any trouble. But having said all that, uh, Duluth East might not have the gaudy record that uh, Lakeville North does, but they do have the gritty <laughs> record, the gritty winning streak, and you cannot count them out. Yeah, those gritty hounds. We, we The whole st uh, crowd has just loved to watch this team, and how much more magic do they have in them? How much more esteem do they have left to go tomorrow night? But I think it's going to be a great championship game. I think Lakeville North, undefeated, they have played like a champion. You know, it's a lot of pressure to play as the number one team undefeated, and, you know, it makes for a great game tomorrow night. Should be fun. And Mike, uh, we have Class A uh, tomorrow as well. A good match up there in the championship. Oh, that's going to be a great game again. I think that out, out of the two games, my prediction is the East Grand Forks Hermantown game is going to be the best of the two. Those two teams are going to be at all out war. They want to be not only champion of the state of Minnesota, but they have want bragging rights in the north. And Hermantown, talk about unfinished business. Yeah. They want to avoid a sixth straight runner up finish. So we'll see what happens. That's why they call it championship. Saturday. We will crown two champions on Saturday. The first game is at noon tomorrow, right here on 45 TV. The second game in Class AA will be at 7 p.m. tomorrow. 
We hope you've enjoyed all of the action today on Semi-Final Friday. We will be back at noon tomorrow here on 45 TV. For all of us here, we thank you for watching, and we hope you have a great night.